1917, directed by Sam Mendes, a war movie taking place unusually during the First World War in the northern France. The main selling point of the film was its cinematography. See, it was made to look like it's just one continuous uninterrupted shot, no cuts, similarly to, for example, Birdman, but way more challenging in this case because of the subject matter and because of the locations, the narrow trenches, rivers, dimly lit bunkers, and of course, all the shooting and explosions going on. Now, obviously, behind the scenes, there were actually edits and cuts. It wasn't just one single shot, but even watching with a keen eye, I was barely able to spot only a few of those cuts, and it's certainly not noticeable enough to pull you out. They're well hidden. And because of this way of shooting and the fact that the camera is almost always centered on one of the two protagonists, um, it is perhaps the most personal war movie I've seen. It really feels like you're in there with them all the time. Story-wise, the film is about two British soldiers, Blake and Schofield, that are tasked with crossing the no-man's land and going deeper behind the German lines in order to find an advanced British company located there. It is chasing the Germans and stop the planned attack of that company. Because what the British forces think um, is a simple chase operation is actually a deliberate trap set by the Germans. And if that attack is not stopped, all 1,600 of British soldiers will perish, among them Blake's own brother. So as I said, the camera work, supervised by Roger Deakins, re legendary Roger Deakins, perhaps the greatest cinematographer currently working, is simply stunning. It, it's unbelievably immersive, and on a purely technical level, the film is a landmark achievement. I wouldn't think making this kind of movie this way would be possible, and even if it was, that it would not work as well as it does. But honestly, it exceeds expectations. A first thing that impressed me was how effectively the film juggles locations and different sets. As we follow the soldiers, they move through a bunch of different places. British trenches, no man's land, German trenches, a bunker, a farm, a ruined town. And if you, th if you think about it for a moment, the ground covered throughout the film is not that great, especially compared to some other war movies. It all takes place on a relatively small map, so to speak. But the set design is brilliant because each of those locations look, looks different. Each of them has something distinct about it, the dominating color, the way it's lit, the atmosphere, the time of day. I think that is really commendable that the filmmakers managed manage to make each chapter of the story so different from each other that it's impossible to mix them up and that's done purely visually. Second, I think that another risk that was averted was that the movie would focus so much on the technical aspect that it would be lacking in terms of the story and the emotional engagement. It isn't. Because of good writing and solid performances and that personal hook of Blake trying to save his own brother, I bought into the film story-wise. Um, the narrative is also helped by clever weaving of calmer and more tense moments. For a while, I thought it would try to do what Dunkirk did, and just keep you on edge and stressed out all the time. In 1917, there are moments of respite in between sequences that are tense and dynamic and dramatic. There are also three or four moments in the film where that tension is built up and then bang, released with a big unexpected moment. I literally jumped in my seat a couple of times. The movie knows when it needs to punch you and it doesn't hold back, not one bit. It's also remarkable how great it manages to look. And what I mean is this, Okay, since it was made as a one-shot, as cinematographer, you would naturally need to focus primarily on the camera movement and keeping up with the actors and the logistics of the whole thing. And while doing that, finding also finding that money shot, that one scene where you place the camera where you want it and you have the perfect frame with the perfect lighting, the one that will later become an iconic shot, would be more difficult, if not impossible. Well, not for Deakins. Um, there are several moments in the film where I thought, wow, okay, this frame is just absolutely brilliant, stunning. The composition, the color, the light, everything works. Deakins finds those perfect shots. There's also one long sequence which starts off with a shot like this. It takes place um, in the latter part of the film in a ruined town. And it's not exactly the climax of the film, especially not emotionally, but it is its greatest moment, I think. You have all these crushed buildings and destroyed walls. You have one of the protagonists standing in the middle of it at the beginning, and it's nighttime, and it's all lit by flares from flare guns that go up and around, making the shadows appear you know, from one side and then shifting to the other. 
you see all this and the music swells up <sighs> man that is that is cinema right there this is one of those scenes that will be remembered for years to come and, and viewed as an example you know those compilations on youtube of best scenes of the year of the decade of, of history this one's going in them this is one of them no doubt um, finally the ending of the film is really fitting and almost cathartic after the horrors that we've just been through and not only that the very last scene manages to be a perfect bookend, a visual and emotional reference to, to the starting point, to the opening shot. And I just love when movies do that. It, it feels so elegant. Um, so I have very high expectations for 1917, and I think in many ways they have been exceeded. I absolutely love the film as a whole, and I think that purely visually speaking, it's, it's a cinematic achievement. It deserves to be seen on the biggest screen possible, so wait no more and run to the movie theater.